Hi everybody, uh, on the uh, W203 chassis, uh, C180 Mercedes-Benz, checking your transmission uh, fluid level. Way down here, you'll see that black cap there, with that little red top on it. Okay, now you're going to have to sacrifice that little red tab to lift the black cap off to be able to dip uh, your level of your transmission. So this is what you end up with. That there just snaps off with a little bladed screwdriver. And the piece which attaches to the bottom of this goes downwards into the cap. You just press that down gently. Uh, that, just to press that down gently, that will allow you to take the cap off. Uh, then you've got access to the uh, filler tube here for the transmission. Be careful not to lose the little o-ring that is there as well. Okay, now you can buy these dipsticks uh, online. This was on eBay, I think it was about $5. They're universal ones, so you'll find it will be longer uh, than what you expect. So when you go into the uh, tube here, it's going to be it's going to bottom out into the pan of the transmission and you'll still be some of the dipstick uh, coming up from the tube it won't all go down inside the tube the little handle here will be well above the top of the tube don't be concerned about that right now you need to take your car for a good run and make sure the transmission is oil is right up to temperature and leave the engine running very important to have the engine running uh, in park okay <laughs> you may uh, want to have somebody with the inside with their foot on the brake and move it through the gears but I don't think we need to go to that extreme you should get a very good indication uh, just with the engine uh, with the transmission and park uh, parking brake on of course for safety and also um, the uh, the oil up the temperature right so on the little dipstick here you've got two positions you've got a cold position down there, the bottom, it says cold. And this part up here is the hot part. Uh, basically this is about 25, I think, degrees C there. And this part up here is about 80 degrees C. Uh, which is up to temperature, around about 80 degrees C is pretty much the expected norm for the temperature uh, of the transmission when it's operating. So with the dipstick fully down and the bottom of this actually touching the bottom of the pan, your oil level should be somewhere in this top zone here should be somewhere in there if it's not you'll need to add some very important that we don't have this transmission underfilled or overfilled either way is going to be an issue anyway I hope that helps you a little bit because in their wisdom Mercedes-Benz make this little job uh, a dealer only uh, task and if you're like me you can't be can't you don't want to have that sort of business you want to have more control over the car than that. Uh, you can buy these little plastic um, uh, lock units. They're about $5 on eBay. You might want to buy two or three of those, have them up your sleeve, um, so that you can do this job um, you know, whenever you feel like it. Uh, that's the replacement one sitting in there now. Okay, I hope that helps you. For those of you that want to check the transmission on your W203 C180, Mercedes Benz, this is a 2004 model car to check that your fluid level is where you'd expect it to be. Okay, I've just changed the engine oil. I do that pretty regularly, probably over over regular, but um, it's just uh, me just being a bit over cautious. This is the Mercedes Benz filter that I use. Here's the part number. I buy these six at a time on eBay. This is the filter element. And there are the, the O-rings. The large O-ring is for sealing the, uh, the cap, uh, the module if you like. And the two small O-rings go on to the stem uh, where, the, um, uh, where, where the filter here uh, slides onto. So what I do when I change my oil is I lift the cap off first of all before anything else. Now you can take the oil filter out without draining the engine oil. It's quite a handy thing to know. So it's down the back here. There it is there. 
so not so easy to see. I'll try to get the better light. There it is there, that red writing around the outside ring. And uh, get your socket onto there. You'll need to have a universal joint to come on a bit of an angle to Mr. Cowling. And uh, just turn that anti-clockwise. Be careful. It's plastic. You don't want to break anything. Lift that out carefully. I have a rag in my hand to put underneath it in case it's going to drip. You don't need oil going down onto the engine. Uh, lift it out. Stick the filter in your recycling system. And uh, wipe it all up nicely. And fit your new parts. Always pays to fit new O-rings on the stem. And of course the big O-ring replaces the old O-ring uh, on this cap here. Right, and then I put this back into the car. Okay. Well, actually, no, I'll leave it out for a little bit longer. Right, now I need to get under the car. It's not too bad. So I get my trolley jack, and I just slip it down here. And uh, where is it? Somewhere along here. There it is. I just stick it onto the jacking point there, and just raise the car up a little bit, and stick my axle stand under the chassis, and uh, so I can reach under there to uh, drain the oil. So... It is a 13 millimeter plug, so make sure you've got a 13 mil socket. If you have it on a long extension, you don't have to reach in too far. And I always put down a tarpaulin onto the, onto the ground, and then put my drain pan on top of the tarpaulin in case anything goes bad, uh, and then let it drain, so drain the oil out. Grab the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the plug is quite long, uh, it's got a long thread, so you wind it out quite a way, have it in your hand, and just gently take the last couple of threads out and, and grab it in your hand. Don't let it fall into the, into the pan, and that way you can um, save pushing it out later. Uh, then I give it a good wipe up, uh, ready for reinstalling later. Uh, let the oil drain, give plenty of time to let the oil drain. Uh, make sure that it's um, just a, maybe the odd little drip coming out at the end, and then you know that it's, the sump is fully drained, and uh, you can put your clean drain plug uh, back into the uh, sump. Be careful not to cross thread it and don't over tighten it. I don't use a torque wrench, but I just nip it up um, just so it feels a little bit tight and that's enough. Um, and put a new uh, washer on it too. I put a new copper crush washer on that as well. Okay, so that's that's part done. So then we can refill. At that stage also I put my filter in place and nip that down nicely. So, I put in 5.5 litres of this oil here. Okay, it's around about what's recommended. You'll see from like 0 to 30, but this is the only one I can get at my um, auto store. And that costs about 95 New Zealand dollars for 6 litres. And I'm using 5.5 litres of that. I measure it off in my measuring container, which is... Uh, it's got all of the graduations on the side, so I can measure it very, very carefully. And I use my funnel, and I top up the engine with exactly 5.5 uh, litres. Doesn't seem to make any difference with the filter uh, being dry. I go for 5.5. Later on, when I check the level, it's, it's just right where it needs to be. If you're really pedantic, you might want to put in maybe another 50 mils for the element, but I don't think you really need to worry about that. Uh, once I've done that, I then put the cap back on and I give the engine a, a quick turnover, but I don't let it catch. Just a couple of quick turns so that it's turning over uh, and then I let it catch uh, so that I don't, um, you know, have it running dry. Uh, I, would, I would never be a person that, like, changes the oil, turns on the engine then starts revving it up uh, before the oil has got a chance to circulate around uh, through all the journals. Just be careful if it's your car, you want to take care of it. The more you care for the car, the less issues you'll have in the future of uh, maintenance and wear and tear breakdowns, etc. So I hope that's going to help you a little bit. It's an easy task to do, uh, changing the oil. So some of you are going to ask, well, John, do I do it after the engine has been hot or do I do it when it's been standing? <laughs> well, I've done it either way, to be honest, guys. The way I did it just this last one, when I changed the oil just this morning, this is what I did. It had been sitting for about uh, oh, well over a week, maybe 10 days just been sitting here. Uh, but before it was sitting here, of course I was driving it. So the engine was hot uh, and then the engine um, you know, would have uh, cooled down gently. 
and all of the oil would have run back down into the sump and so when I uh, drained the oil this time I drained it cold all right and I feel that I've got all of the oil out without having to sort of heat it up and and let it run down and out uh, I have done it either way and I don't really think there's a major disadvantage in either way to be honest um, uh, so I did it cold this time and uh, bottled the oil up and sent that back for recycling so you might have a comment on that whether it's good or bad practice to do it hot or cold but um, well if it's cold it was hot at one stage that's the way I look at it and um, it's had a chance to over that time fully drip down into the sump there should be very very little oil remaining uh, around the uh, top of the engine uh, that gets missed out uh, I guess that's one of the reasons also because it's a bit dry uh, that I don't um, I, I'm very careful when I when I restart the engine I make sure she cranks um, without it catching uh, so that I don't put any pressure on any of the parts that may um, not have enough uh, any lube oil around them especially up around the camshafts okay well that's uh, about all I wanted to say for now uh, but I would say with that, please um, don't feel that this is a, a task which is beyond the average handy person. Um, it does help if you have got a jack to lift the car up a little bit. It's quite low under there to get to the drain plug. Uh, you of course have to take off your um, uh, bottom uh, covers that, that uh, cover over the transmission area. <laughs> I have left my one off uh, because I do my... Um, I do my oil change quite regularly and uh, I just leave that off so I can get to it easily. That's just, I don't go and drive over uh, rough roads with lots of stones and gravel so I don't feel that I'm really placing the sump into any risk there. So that's the way I do it. And I change my oil um, sometimes by the date and sometimes by the mileage but Certainly within six months I changed the oil. I don't do very many miles. Within six months I've probably done about maybe two or three thousand kilometers at the most. So I'm over the top cautious changing oil and filters. Uh, and I hope that that uh, pays back dividends in the future. Uh, that I can get a good mileage out of this car. That I'm very happy with and in no hurry to, um, to upgrade it. It's just um, about to hit 200,000 kilometers which uh, for the condition of this car, the way it's been looked after, as you might remember on the second owner, I bought it off a lady that brought it brand new. It's been well serviced by her at the Mercedes dealership and it's just in my ownership that I have uh, taken care of the maintenance myself. So I think that uh, if I carry on uh, pampering the oil changes and I certainly don't give this vehicle a hard time anyway, I take it quite quietly. I feel if uh, you don't really need to thrash a vehicle like this, it purrs along quite nicely at highway speeds uh, anyway. There you go. Well, I hope you're having a, a good time where you are, and I hope your projects are going to plan. Uh, what could possibly go wrong with oil change? Well, <laughs> you've got a lot of oil around the place once you've drained it, so be very careful not to bump your your, um, your drain pan and drop your tools into it and all that sort of good stuff and, or splash it around so a tarpaulin on the ground is not a bad idea um, we've all had little accidents with uh, oil spills that's for sure and it's a pain to mop it up and you know try to get the uh, clean up the mess afterwards a little bit of a gap in my garage today my CRF 230F is no longer here I've sold it New owners uh, picked it up and it's gone. Uh, gives me space for me to bring the uh, DRZ250 around the back here behind the car where I can do some uh, more work on that. So on my 250 degree I've had so much trouble uh, just recently with the bike. It was hard starting and when it did start up it wouldn't run very long. Anyway, I fitted a brand new carburetor on it. It's a bit hard to see in the dark here, but it's got a brand new carburetor in there. So I thought, well, surely the float lever on a carburetor would be okay. It shouldn't be set too low, uh, and uh, the bowl should be able to fill. Anyway, 
I wondered about this for a few days and I thought well maybe it is the actual fuel tank. So I took the fuel tank off and uh, ran the fuel out of the pet cot. Well nothing came out either in the um, in the on position or the reserve position nothing came out but there's fuel in the tank. Uh, what did come out was just a very very small dribble of fuel. So I thought okay there's a problem with the pet cot. So Anyway I tipped the fuel out from the um, from the fuel filler and it came out looking pretty nasty actually. It's a metal tank on these bikes, it's a steel tank. Although it didn't have any rust in there, it didn't feel, but uh, the, the fuel came out pretty nasty looking. A bit muddy looking actually, dirty. Took the pet cot off, this one you actually screw it on, it's an 18mm thread onto a nipple on the bottom of the fuel tank. I took that off and uh, had a look inside, it was really nasty and so was the little plastic tube above it. So I have bought a brand new pet cot for this and it should be here shortly and I can refit it. So I, I did actually uh, manage to bypass it all and had the engine running beautifully, um, it ran continuously. I've been riding around on the street here, it didn't um, uh, run out of fuel so I know the carburetor was fine uh, and that uh, it was just a matter of fuel starvation from the tank. So if you have a problem like that, I think mine was due to the fact that I hadn't emptied the tank out. Uh, from now on I'm going to be draining it uh, completely dry and the bowl of the carb when I'm not using this bike because it sits here for months without being used. In fact it must be just about a year since I last turned it on. Anyway that was a little update on the 250 degree. I'm uh, really really happy with that uh, repair and I'll, um, I'll make a little video of it when I get the tank back on again with my new pet cot. Uh, I'll be riding around on it. <laughs> Tyres had no use at all. Anyway, thank you very much for viewing. And uh, if you've got a Mercedes Benz and you can't see where to check the oil level of your transmission, this is a way around it. It's a massive, <laughs> it's a massive dipstick. It hangs out by quite a few inches from the top of the filler tube, but. Apparently these are universal dipsticks and some of the transmissions that Mercedes-Benz have uh, do need the full length. Thank you for viewing. Really do appreciate my new subscribers to my small channel. Uh, just over a thousand subscribers now so I'm very very happy about that. Um, do uh, Thank you very much for supporting me and I hope that some of the content that I bring to you is of some interest to you. Catch you a little later in another one.